Welcome to a spine-chilling compilation of three true IKEA horror stories animated. In this video, we journey through the endless aisles and towering shelves of the seemingly innocuous IKEA, a place known for its furniture and meatballs. But beyond the flat packs and showroom setups, we uncover tales of the bizarre and the terrifying. These are not your usual shopping trips, but true accounts that transform the ordinary into the realm of nightmares. From mysterious disappearances between the Billy bookcases to eerie encounters in the warehouse after dark, prepare yourself for a gripping animated series that brings these true horror stories to life. Dare to venture with us into the hidden, haunted corridors of Ikea, where every turn might lead to a story you wish you hadn't heard. Several years ago, I found myself in a dilemma when my parents had to relocate out of state for my dad's new job. Being enrolled in college, I was determined not to quit and move with them. This required me to find a job that could accommodate my school schedule and cover rent. My best option turned out to be a night stocking position at the local IKEA. The job was relatively straightforward. Scan an item and put it on the shelf. It wasn't exactly rocket science. For the first three weeks, I worked the swing shift while training. On the fourth week, I was moved to nights. To my surprise, I discovered that it would just be two of us during the night shift. Myself and my supervisor, Nick. I had briefly interacted with Nick before, but never directly. He was about 10 years older and often shared stories about his newborn baby. After enduring a lengthy discussion about diaper changes with Nick in the break room, he sent me off to stock LED light bulbs in the lighting section. Spotting a Snickers bar on one of the break room tables, I snagged it for later, assuming it was up for grabs. Initially, the dark, expansive store felt eerie, especially alone. I kept mistaking shadowy figures for someone lurking, only to realize they were just displays or furniture arrangements. To distract myself from the silence and solitude, I decided to listen to music through my headphones. Around 1 a.m., a light flickered behind me, as if someone had passed by and momentarily blocked one of the display lamps. Removing my headphones, I listened intently, half expecting to hear Nick calling out, but the store remained silent. Suddenly, a whisper broke the silence someone muttering about a missing Snickers bar. I assumed it was Nick, but after a brief period of quiet, I shrugged it off as my imagination and resumed my work. The night progressed, and eventually, a pressing need arose due to my excessive Mountain Dew consumption. I looked around for Nick to let him know I was stepping away, but he was nowhere to be found. Assuming he was elsewhere in the store, I made my way to the bathrooms. The hallway leading to the restrooms echoed with Nick's murmurs, his voice low and indistinct. I called out to him but received no response. Urgency overtook curiosity, and I proceeded into the women's restroom, which, oddly, felt colder than the rest of the store. Inside, I found a faucet running hot water with the sink's drain clogged by paper towels. It was peculiar, especially considering the lights were on, indicating someone had recently been there. After shutting off the water and contemplating the implications of the situation, I entered a stall. Midway through, I noticed a pair of black tennis shoes standing outside my stall. Panic clenched my throat and I coughed out a tentative inquiry. Nick, is that you? The shoes vanished, followed by the sound of the bathroom door opening and closing. 
the unsettling incident left me rattled, questioning the safety and sanity of my late night work environment at Ikea. Hastily exiting the restroom, I collided with Nick in the hallway. He questioned if I had been in the women's restroom, but his protective booties over his shoes convinced me otherwise. I dismissed my concerns and mentioned needing a break, but our conversation was cut short by the eerie sound of a display scraping against the floor. Both of us tensed, listening intently, and as more disturbances echoed through the aisles, Nick, armed with nothing but a ladle, ventured out to investigate, instructing me to call security. Before I could react, a glass jar narrowly missed my head, shattering behind me. A low, grumbling voice demanded the missing Snickers bar. Panicked, I called out for Nick and followed him, losing his trail between the bedding and closet organization aisles. Wary of attracting the mysterious assailant, I moved silently, eventually reaching a row of mirrors. My reflection was accompanied by a grisly image of a man dressed in black with a wiry beard and menacing stare. Desperate, I offered the Snickers bar from my pocket, which he snatched eagerly. The tension broke as a security officer and Nick appeared, apprehending the man, Henry, who had been living in the warehouse behind the store and had a history of schizophrenia. It was revealed that the typical security officer, Mike, would give Henry a Snickers bar to keep him away. But that night's replacement had forgotten. The experience left an indelible mark, and whenever I worked night shifts during college, I made sure to carry a Snickers bar, just in case. Before ending the tale, I encourage listeners to subscribe to the channel Noting the support and engagement helps deliver more thrilling content. As the story concludes, it serves as a haunting reminder of the unexpected encounters that can occur in the most mundane of settings, turning an ordinary night shift into a night of terror. At 17, desperate for a job, I landed a position at my local Ikea despite feeling highly unqualified. On my first shift, a fellow worker, Sam, approached me with a dire warning. He was visibly exhausted and anxious as he spoke of our boss, Mr. Walker, a man with a dubious past and a prison record. Sam suggested that several predecessors had mysteriously disappeared on their first day, never to be seen again implying Mr. Walker's involvement. The advice was clear, avoid the boss at all costs. The warning left me unsettled, but I proceeded with my duties, which included running the till and restocking shelves. As I took over the restocking task, Sam ominously whispered about my predecessor, Jessica, who had gone missing just a week prior on the same shift. The weight of his words left me shaken, but I continued, driven by the need for the job. The day progressed until the store announced its closing. As I moved towards the back of the store for further restocking, I noticed the shelves becoming increasingly barren, ignoring a no access sign, assuming it was meant for customers. I ventured deeper into a restricted zone the further I went, the more the atmosphere changed. The lights dimmed, and a foul, overpowering stench wafted through the air. Stepping forward, the smell intensified. I peered down the corridor to see a metal door at the end, emitting a strange red light. It felt wrong, dangerous even, and I wasn't about to explore alone. I radioed Sam for assistance briefly explaining the situation. His response was curt, almost as if he expected the call. Moments later, I heard his footsteps rushing through the store. When he arrived, out of breath and panic-stricken, 
I pointed towards the ominous door. As our eyes locked on the peculiar sight, we both realized the gravity of what we might be facing. A secret lurking in the depths of Ikea that was perhaps meant to remain undiscovered. As Sam and I cautiously approached the mysterious door, the sight that awaited us beyond was harrowing. Inside lay a gruesome collection of metal cages, each containing the decaying remains of individuals in Ikea uniforms. The sight of mangled bodies, some with severe head injuries or severed necks, was appalling. Among the horror, Sam recognized one of the corpses as Jessica, the co-worker I had replaced, her appearance marked by violence and neglect. The chilling discovery was interrupted by the sound of heavy footsteps and clanging tools. Mr. Walker, our boss, appeared at the end of the corridor, his eyes ablaze with a maniacal shock. As he laid down the box he carried, and slowly drew a blood-dripped machete from it. The realization of our dire situation sunk in. Without a second thought, Sam grabbed me, urging me to run. We barricaded ourselves in a room, frantically dialing the police as Walker hammered and slashed at the door. Despite the terror and threats from the other side, Sam held the door closed determined to protect us both from the fate of his former colleagues. After what felt like an eternity, the police arrived, charging down the corridor. We opened the door, revealing the gruesome scene to the officers who were visibly shaken by the display. They immediately inquired about the perpetrator, but by then, Mr. Walker had vanished. Following the incident, the store underwent a management overhaul, and the investigation into the horrific findings began. The traumatic experience left an indelible mark on all who witnessed it, a grim reminder of the hidden dangers that can lurk behind even the most mundane facades. The discovery of the cages and the unfortunate victims who once donned the same uniform I wore was a chilling testament to the true horrors that unfolded within the walls of the local Ikea. Once the terrible truth came to light and the bodies were cleared away, it was revealed that Mr. Walker had a dark past. Previously jailed for the homicide of his wife and children in the 80s, the horrific incident at Ikea resulted in a complete management overhaul. Sam and I, deeply affected by the trauma, never returned to work there. Instead, we occasionally visited Jessica's grave, among those of the other victims, a grim reminder of our narrow escape. In a different tale, I found myself on the brink of eviction when an opportunity at Ikea surfaced. Offering a position as a weekend night security guard, the previous guard had left after a minor workplace accident, details of which were scarce. Despite my apprehension, the need for income drove me to accept the job. Starting the new role, I found solace in the quiet of night shifts, often talking to myself and roaming the store floors, an activity that had cost me previous jobs, but was encouraged by my new boss at Ikea. He was a peculiar man with bug eyes and a crooked smile, assuring me that the extensive camera coverage meant there was nothing to worry about. One night, while indulging in my routine of exploring and self-conversation, a loud crash disrupted the silence. Investigating the noise led me to one of the showroom kitchens where a vase lay shattered on the floor. Strangely, the stove was on, but a quick inspection confirmed it wasn't plugged in. The oddity of the situation unsettled me, reminding me that no job, especially one in the dead of night, is ever as straightforward as it seems. The eerie occurrence, coupled with the store's history, 
and my own apprehensive thoughts, painted a foreboding picture of what might lie ahead in the shadowed aisles of Ikea. Having adapted to the quirks and mysteries of night shifts, I wasn't new to pranks and odd occurrences, but something about this night at Ikea felt different. The vastness of the store made it an ideal setting for bored employees or teens to play tricks. Yet, the mention of ghosts by the day shift and a warning of the solitary nights added an eerie layer to the experience. Slightly agitated, but driven by the need for the job, I tried to assert my presence. Stomping through the store, and warning the unseen pranksters of potential consequences. My search led me to a bathroom, expecting to find the source of the recent disturbances. Instead, I found only a shattered mirror and a menacing note reading, get out. The situation grew increasingly bizarre. While pranks were not unusual, the extent and nature of this one seemed off. My experience in security had taught me the feel of a building, the weight of its silence, and the whispers of its corners. Despite rational explanations, the lingering feeling of not being alone persisted. The vast, empty aisles of Ikea, once just a workplace, now seemed to hide a more sinister presence, challenging the boundaries of my skepticism and igniting a cautious curiosity about what lay in the shadows beyond. As a seasoned security guard, I was well acquainted with the usual signs of human presence, from the subtle sounds of movement to the nearly imperceptible rhythm of breathing. But the Ikea was silent, unnervingly so. The sense of unease deepened as I realized that only ten minutes had passed since my shift began despite feeling like hours had elapsed. In an attempt to regain some semblance of control, I decided to retreat to the security room, only to find the door inexplicably locked. The struggle to enter left me panting and on edge, the terror slowly taking hold. Once inside, I hastily barricaded the door, seeking refuge in the familiarity of the security cameras. However, comfort eluded me. The screen showed an empty store, confirming my solitude. Yet, as I watched, the room seemed to subtly shift and change. Objects moving without cause, the layout altering in impossible ways. Doubt crept in, teasing the edges of my rational mind with whispers of hauntings. Then, the air shifted growing inexplicably cold. A laughter, loud and sharp, echoed off the walls, filling the room with a palpable dread. I felt an overwhelming presence, cold and heavy, as if unseen arms were wrapping around me, immobilizing me with fear. Panic took over, and I knew I had to flee. In that moment of sheer terror, Running seemed the only option, the only possible escape from the inexplicable horrors lurking within the silent, shifting walls of the Ikea. Desperation led me to the windows as the only means of escape. The main doors were securely locked, and I didn't have time to disable the alarm system. Though not an ideal route, it seemed manageable. The extra, invisible weight that seemed to burden me made the escape more challenging. But the need to flee was overwhelming. Let me go. I grappled with the force that held me back, managing to twist free and tumble out of the window. I hit the ground and ran, driven by pure instinct, away from the nightmarish experience inside the store. As I sprinted, something landed on my head, a piece of paper, wet and grimy from the rain. It must have been carried by the wind from wherever it had been posted. My hands still shaking, 
I stopped to examine it. A sinking realization dawning on me as I did so. The paper was a missing person poster, and the name, chillingly familiar, seemed to explain the higher than usual pay for the job. The poster not only highlighted the dangers of the position, but also hinted at the darker, unspoken history of the IKEA. A history intertwined with disappearances and unexplained occurrences, adding another layer of horror to an already terrifying night. As the chilling truth settled in, the night's events at Ikea took on a new, horrifying context. The strange occurrences, the oppressive presence, and the inexplicable alterations within the store were no longer just a series of odd pranks or a product of my imagination. They were possibly connected to a deeper, darker secret, one that involved missing individuals and untold stories. The realization that I was perhaps lucky to escape, to not become another name on a missing poster, was both sobering and terrifying. This experience served as a stark reminder that sometimes the places we consider mundane can harbor the most chilling secrets. It's a warning to listen to our instincts, to question what lies beneath the surface, and to tread carefully in the shadows of the unknown. As I walked away from the Ikea that night, the missing person poster clutched in my hand. I knew that my life had changed. I had glimpsed a world where everyday settings hid nightmares, and I was determined never to forget the lessons learned in the eerie, shifting aisles of the store. With every step I took away from that place, I carried with me not just fear, but a newfound respect for the mysteries that lurk just out of sight, reminding us that sometimes the true horror is what goes unseen and unsaid.